At the mission hospital at the foot of the Drakensberg mountain, the mothers come here with hope. They trust that someone can help their babies to reach out and cure the sick children. But in land isolated by vast distances, specialist health care is not always at hand. To nurse the young back to health and help them smile and laugh again. When the elderly from the villages gather at the rural hospital in KwaZulu-Natal, they come here with hope, wishing that someone can examine their eyes and give a helping hand and cure the blindness caused by cataracts, to restore blurred vision and help them witness the world again. They have transported more than 12,000 patients over 7 million kilometers and reached out to over 200,000 people on the African continent. For more than 40 years, the South African Red Cross Air Mercy Service has made health care available via the aircraft to areas where no adequate medical facilities exist, flying in medical specialists and volunteers donating their time and professional knowledge and bringing hope where once there was despair. Essentially, there's a huge amount of goodwill in the country and it's very often underestimated. And people do it out the kindness of their heart. We, in the areas that we operate, we operate in conjunction with the provincial health authorities. We won't operate an area unless we have their support. And if you take an area like KwaZulu Natal, uh, about 50% of the medical expertise that we take out into those rural areas on a daily basis comes from the private sector where they donate their time. They're volunteers, we don't pay them for their services. In fact, there's a cost to them. Many of them are professionals that, that close their practices or are not available for, uh, during those days where they could be ge generating revenue for themselves. But they come to offer their expertise, their assistance again, as a contribution to, to society and to help those rural populations which otherwise wouldn't have access to those, to those uh, that, or that expertise. As a not-for-profit organisation, the Air Mercy Services' focus is to provide air transportation to crit using planes and helicopters. No, it's more, about, it's more than just aeroplanes and flying. We manage to reach thousands of people every year where road vehicles could not get to them. We are a very speedy uh, service where if you give us a call within five minutes on the helicopter of getting that call, we can be in the air to respond to an emergency. We do operate 24 hours a day as well. We take a lot of professional people to people who are injured, who are, who are in need of help. So it's not just about planes. We are only using the planes to get to them as quick as what we possibly can. The Flying Doctor and Outreach Service brings health care to rural communities by flying specialists to outlying hospitals. Amy's health care services are directed mainly at disadvantaged communities in isolated places. South Africa, as, as you know, has a very diverse population from very rich people to very poor people. And the population that we mostly serve is the poorer population. And so the disease profile of the children that we see is very much a third world disease profile um, of infectious diseases, HIV, and malnutrition as well. Working with the people who work in this hospital, both the doctors and nurses, um, there's an immense amount that we can do with very little. Um, if we just get the basics right, it's amazing what can be achieved. And you've just seen that little child now in the ward who was admitted with severe malnutrition and really through a telephone call to me and the doctors and nurses working here um, very well, that child's life has been saved. So uh, it's incredibly rewarding coming here. Obviously there's also the, the heartbreak um, and the, the pain of seeing children suffer and, and die. Um, but for those of us that have chosen to stick with the public health system, that's, that's just opportunity. We have an amazing opportunity to work with big challenges and actually overcome them. Meanwhile, the ophthalmologists are preparing to perform surgery that will heal blind eyes. While age-related cataracts are responsible for nearly half of the world's blindness, these doctors can remove about 30 cataracts a day. 
Well, basically we go into the eye, we remove the cataract, which is the patient's lens that has just become um, opaque and white. And then um, because we've removed it, we have to replace it with something clear. And that's the intraocular lens that we put in. After we've put in the intraocular lens, we'll put in sutures that will be removed after two months. And then basically we can try and give them glasses to correct any residual um, error that they might have. And then hopefully they play fine and they can see. I think it really makes you feel good. Um, it makes you thankful for what you've got as well. Um, they've got so much less and you do something small and they are so happy about that. So you just realise how much you've got to be thankful of. So I think in a way it, it makes you appreciate what you've got much more. That's basically why we do what we do. And when the first time that you see a patient that had a cataract and we open the eye patch, it's just, it's overwhelming. I mean, patients will take it off and start dancing or singing. And it's just, to give somebody the, the gift of, of sight is, it's, it's amazing. It's just, you, you don't know what you've lost until you actually get it back. And these patients, they go through it. The reason why I chose this career is because it's very rewarding. We help lots of people out of difficult situations, situations that they wouldn't expect themselves to be in. We tend to find people when they are at their most vulnerable, when they are really in need of help, and that is when we can. And that in its entirety is what is why I do this. It is very rewarding. It makes you feel good about yourself, makes you know that you're doing a difference to people's lives and changing their lives.